We thank you for joining us. Here's the news at 10 with me, Aditola Coyote. You're welcome. The Lagos State Government has assured residents that it is working hard in conjunction with security agencies to address the recent cases of kidnappings and armed robbers in parts of the state. In a statement issued by the Secretary to the State Government, Sunji Belo, the administration of Governor Kimomi Ambade will continue to protect the lives and property of its citizens in every part of the state. While sympathizing with the families of victims in Iba and Ikorodu, the Secretary to the State Government urged residents to go about their normal businesses without any fear. He advised Lagosians to be very vigilant and security conscious as intelligence reports have shown that most of these heinous crimes are perpetrated through recalcitrant elements who have infiltrated the state and are carrying out this act in conjunction with friends, family members or close associates of the victims. Mr. Bello urged residents to take advantage of the state's toll-free lines 112 and 767 to report any case of crime or unusual or suspicious movement of uh, strange faces in their neighborhood to security agencies. Lagos lawmakers are asking the federal government to take the issue of insecurity in the nation, especially in Lagos State, more seriously. They said the establishment of community policing in various states can help provide solution to the rising challenge. Correspondent Busola Kukoyi reports that the House also called on Senator Dino Milai to tender an unreserved apology to the APC national leader Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu for his statement. Her report. The day's proceedings started with prayers for the safe return of the kidnapped Oba of Iba land. All members of the House decried the unfortunate incident which claimed the life of the Monarch's Knights Guard, noting that it would not have been possible for such a dastardly act if there were community police officers who have a good knowledge of the area on ground. Unless we are able to apprehend those who perpetrated this act, they may be emboldened and encouraged more to deal with lesser citizens of Lagos State. This shows it's a serious threat to us here in Lagos. And that, for me, that's the reason why I think our concept of federalism should be reviewed vis-a-vis -vis relation to security matters. It is important that all our border towns should be fortified, both are the, uh, the waterways and also the roads. The federal government cannot abandon us to the consequences of this action. If we have to do something, we must be mindful of the consequences or what, it will, what effect it will have on the people. The effect of the present policy of the federal government on the people of Lagos State is totally negative. It seems our effort is becoming uh, useless and senseless because if we have contributed so much and yet the security of our people cannot be ascertained, cannot be ensured, seems what we are doing is not eating fruit if, as you have all mentioned, a monarch can be, you know, picked up in his palace just like a snail. I think it's so terrible. The House also addressed what it described as the display of rudeness and disrespect to the national leader of the APC. Ashua Jubola Ahmed Tinumbu and his wife, a sitting senator representing Lagos Central, Senator Oluremi Tinumbu, they called on the erring senator to tender an unreserved apology to both of them. The president of the Senate to really set up a panel to investigate Dino Melaye for this uh, un un unacceptable entrance to a colleague. His utterances also have buttressed the fact that he has disdain for women be it if a girl, a lady, talk less of a married woman, and a senator for that matter, someone that distinguished herself representing the whole of Lagos State. Telling the man in question that he should watch it, that he should not violate our representative, he should not abuse our representative, and not to her alone and others who are representing uh, the senatorial district in Lagos State. 
Earlier, some aggrieved women had protested to the House over the conduct of Senator Dino Melaye and submitted a letter calling for the Senator to be called to order. Busola Kukoyi, LTV News. Meanwhile, the police in Lagos has assured a safe return of the kidnapped Obav Iba land of Bagoriola Oseni, who was whisked away from his palace in Lagos. Police Public Relations Officer Dolapo Badmas told LTV News that the kidnappers were pipeline vandals who were obviously out of business searching for soft targets. A group under the umbrella of concerned women has called on Senator Dino Milai to tender an unreserved apology at the hallowed chamber of the Senate to women over what they termed is unruly behavior towards Senator Oluremi Tinubu last week. We have details by correspondent Omo Luluoso. The alleged altercation between Senator Dino Melaye, representing Kogi West, and Senator Ulure Mitinubu from Lagos Central Central Districts at the closed-door executive session on the 12th of July at the Senate Chamber of the National Assembly seems to be attracting more attention. These women folk under the aegis of concerned women are not happy with Senator Dino Milaya's utterances against Senator Olure Mitinubu and by extension to the females. Hence their protest to the governor's office in Lagos for onward transmission to President Muhammadu Buhari. We, the concerned group, condemn in very strong terms Senator Dino Milaya's assault on Senator Olure Mitinubu and therefore call on Senator Dino to tender all research public apology. Failure to do this within, within a acceptable frame of time. We therefore call on relevant authorities to expedite measure within our legal system against Senator Dino Milaye, not only to serve as a deterrent to others, but also to send strong signal to young people so as not to see Dino's character as an ideal conduct in the same and in civilized society. What the ministry stands for, it does not uh, stand for abuse. The ministry does not stand for uncouth uh, utterances. And that is exactly, we all know it in the papers and the news, that's exactly what uh, the no Milaye has done. We condemn his action in all its totality. It is condemnable. We say no to it. What do you say to it? No. The women folk also took their protest to the Lagos State House of Assembly and were received by the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Wasiu Eshinokusani. Who also treat this letter on the floor of the House and um, will do all that is needful and will, will be able to deliver your message to the appropriate authority. Although no statement has been issued by the Senate leadership, efforts must be geared towards resolving the issue before it attains another dimension. Amoluluru Sangwu, LTV News. Moving on to other stories, Governor Akiomi Ambadi has attributed the success of his administration to the resilience and hard work of public servants in the state, declaring open the second summit of the Association of Legal State Retired Heads of Service and Permanent Secretaries, the governor said going forward, the ideas and suggestions of the retired government workers will serve as backup to policy formulation. Correspondent Ulubukola Akinkolushu reports. 
The second summit of the Association of Lagos State Retired Heads of Service and Permanent Secretaries allowed, allowed for the retirees and even upcoming ones to mingle, share their joys and aspirations. The approval of Alaops by Governor Akimumi Ambodi is to serve as policy advisor, the think tank to the Lagos State Government, with a view to leveraging on the institutional experience and knowledge of members regarding policy formulation, development, and implementation. Speaking during the second summit, Governor Akimumi Ambodi, who was represented by his deputy, Dr. Idiot Adebule, said with the increasing population of Lagos, there is a need for new innovations to move with the current time. Therefore, the theme for the second summit is instructive and apt. I have no doubt about the fact that the future of the state is bright and assured. Yet, I have no President of Alaops, Alaji Kayode and Jori, and other participants spoke on the intent of the 2016 summit and their expectation afterwards. Lagos State is blessed with a highly informed and sophisticated citizenry whose expectations of the state government are usually very high. The intent of the 2016 summit therefore is to assist you in this regard. These are men and women that are seasoned, that they have a lot to offer. Some retired pretty young, some retired even at 60, but you still find out that they still have a lot to offer society. The Ambody administration, from my own experience, from what I have seen so far, is, um, uh, has focused on improving the lives of the people. I'll be retiring in another five years. I look forward to it. In fact, um, coming here is a learning experience for me. The theme for the second summit of Alaops is sustaining the tradition of excellence. Olubukola Akin Koleushu, LTV News. The Lagos State Government has begun the process of employing qualified candidates into various vacant positions in the state civil service. In a statement by the Chairman, Lagos State Civil Service Commission, Mrs. Adeyinka Taiwo Oyemade, the government said vacancies are available for education officers, technical instructors, building officers, as well as civil and structural engineers. The government also said vacancies are available for architects, medical consultants, and principal pharmacists. It urged interested applicants to submit their application on the state's online portal jobs.lagosstate.gov.ng, noting that application closes at midnight of August 1, 2016. A two-day workshop on the roles of judges in the fight against corruption has opened in the nation's federal capital, Abuja. Declaring the workshop open, President Muhammad Buhari laid the crux of the challenges inherent in the fight against corruption on the doorstep of the nation's judicial sector and therefore charged members of the judiciary to live above board in their operations and administration of the new Criminal Justice Act 2015. Our State House correspondent, Adeboyega Arobodo, covered the opening session. His report. Even though 
corruption is regarded as a global phenomenon. It is more pronounced and complicated in developing countries. It remains a singular obstacle to peace, sustainable development, and good governance. This two-day workshop organized by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption is considered timely as it hopes to reflect on the nation's judicial system in the face of the current fight against corruption, and it will also assert the present administration's zero tolerance on corruption and financial waste in governance. The future of anti-corruption efforts in Nigeria rests not only on one function, the preventive system, but also on effective sanctions and the enforcement regime in accordance with the laws. We count on the judiciary to be its part in this regard. On our part, we are committed to promoting the supporting and supporting the judiciary to achieve our judicial system. Drawing experiences from other clients, this forum intends to highlight the critical roles of law officers and other core players of the investigation and adjudication processes, vis-à-vis -vis the police, the prison authorities, and the anti-graft agencies. We are thus left with the judicial attitude and approach to the handling of corruption cases at the appellate level, that is at the Court of Appeal and at the Supreme Court. The Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption was convinced that the most effective way of galvanizing our appellate justices into a proactive mode in corruption cases was to invite their colleagues from various other national jurisdictions where there has been a good record of swift, efficient, and successful prosecution of corruption cases. Other speakers stressed on the need to have the judiciary fully independent and preserve the rule of law, and it must be a sector which must eschew all acts of corruption within its rank and file. Corruption in Nigeria, as in other clients, is a complex and many-sided problem that cannot be solved in isolation. The reality of its corrosive effects is found in the socio-economic threat that it poses to the development of harmony in Nigeria. Judicial corruption is especially dangerous to a society's well-being. And unfortunately, there is much evidence from around the world to show that where corruption is rife in the public sector, the judiciary aids and abets that corruption by failing to uphold the rule of law. When one talks about judicial corruption, one immediately has the image of a judge taking a bribe. But judicial corruption has many more facets. Panels at the workshop will discuss areas of sentencing in high-profile cases, comparative experiences in handling judicial corruption, access recovery proceedings, among other topical areas. It is expected that this workshop will further ensure a more robust and synchronized judicial system and also sharpen the operations of the nation's judges in tackling the cancer of corruption. Adibuega, Arogbodo, LTV News, Abuja. And back in Lagos, the state governor, Akihumi Ambade, has restated government's resolve to enforcing relevant regulations on noise pollution in the state. He made the remarks when the MTN Foundation distributed 250 hearing aid devices to beneficiaries in the state, including children less than one year. The governor, who was represented by his special advisor on primary health, Dr. Femi Onanuga, stressed that no individual or corporate organization would be spared in government's renewed onslaught against defaulters. He urged the 250 beneficiaries of the Hearing Aid Support Project in Lagos State to join the crusade of campaign against noise pollution in this society. Also speaking, wife of the governor, Mrs. Bolan Liambode, hinted that coincidentally, the Committee of Wives of Legal State Officials Council would do a similar program later in the year, urging the beneficiaries to use the devices as instructed and also handle them with care. I mean, time the Consumer Protection Council, CPC, has commenced a nationwide grassroots consumer awareness program with women as part of efforts to stem consumer abuse in Nigeria. 
The Nigerian consumer ambassador and wife of the president, Aisha Buhari, would lead the campaign against the violation of the rights of consumers in the country. It will also help the agency carry out effective mobilization of women. The council had also identified other platforms such as the road transport union, commercial motorcyclists, the National Orientation Agency, student bodies and um, National Association of Nigerian Traders among others as partners to stop consumer abuse. The CPC's Director General Dukwe Atoki had launching the sensitization campaign for women groups said the collaboration would help improve the level of consumer awareness in the country stating that women constitute the largest consumer block in the economy by virtue of their innate ability and God-given role of making purchase decisions as well as catering for the family. They suffer the most abuse as consumers. And on the international scene, a former Turkish Air Force commander has confessed to planning last week's attempted military coup. General Akin Osterk said he acted with intention to stage a coup. Photographs of the general published by the Turkey news agency appeared to show several injuries to his head and upper body. The general had earlier denied any involvement in the coup attempt and insisted he worked to stop it. The news agency earlier reported that he was one of the 70 generals and admirals who had been detained. 11 had so far been placed under arrest, it added. More than 8,000 police officers were also suspended and forced to hand over their weapons as part of a purge of officials suspected of involvement. And in sports, the National Executive Council of the Nigeria Football Supporters Club has impeached and suspended the acting national chairman of the club, Vincent Okumagba, for gross indiscipline, abuse of office and anti-club activities. We have details of this and more in our sports package. Rising from its neck meeting in Lagos at the weekend, which was attended by 15 out of the 18 chapters of the club in the country, the club accused the SWAL acting chairman of engaging activities capable of ridiculing the club before the Nigerian public. Briefing the press on the outcome of their meeting, which was presided over by the Deputy President General of the club, Al Haji Yusuf Adirele, acting public relations officer of the club, Hafiz Balogu, and the chairman of Abuja branch of the club, Professor Kenneth Onyemere, noted that impeachment became necessary in order to put a stop to the impunity being perpetrated by Okumagba, even as he announced the second national vice chairman, engineer Isaac Ebusewe, as the new acting national chairman of the club. Embarrassing the clubs, you know, outside, um, at the Potakot, um, during the um, Yobos event is there. The issue of the list is submitted uh, for the Rio Olympic is there. A single attend list submitted 286 lists to the um, list through the um, um, what do you call it, through the ministry, and is claiming that is the leader of the club. Unfortunately, the, the list is submitted does not include any of the member of the executive, neither the PG, the deputy PG, executives, or any other great leaders of the club were there. And it goes around claim, um, claiming that he's the leader of the club. To us, that is misconduct and a great anti-party activity. Elsewhere, as preparations for their participation in the Super Cup reaches advanced stage, the managing director of Baruch Sports Academy, Salahuddin Wahed, has praised the CEO of Team Tours Direct, who doubles as the event director of the 2016 Welsh International Super Cup. Thierry O'Neill, for what he described as his unflinching commitment to ensuring that Nigerian representatives have the best of time in one of the most celebrated football competitions in the whole of the United Kingdom. Following his relationship with the Swansea-based sports outfit over the years, coupled with his exemplary conduct and inspiring performance of young players paraded by the Kroodu-based academy at the Dubai International Super Cup in March this year, the Welsh-born chief executive of Britain's foremost store and sports management company has been assisting the management of Boruj in the process of getting the necessary documents and other logistic requirements that will help the contingent to have a huge free stay in the Queensland. The Baruch contingent are expected to depart the shores of the country on August 1st for London, all things being equal. The Welsh International Super Cup will kick off on August 4 in Cardiff, Wales. Ijo Machibu, LTV News.
And that's it on the news at 10 tonight. We thank you so much for watching. For more on our news broadcast, you can please log on to our website, lagostelevision.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Lagos Television. You can be part of our YouTube community by logging on to youtube.com forward slash Lagos Television. Our LTV app is also available for download on your iOS, BlackBerry, and Android phones. Thanks for watching. I am Adetola Coyote. On behalf of all of us here, we wish that you have a wonderful night rest. Good night.